that means 100%. I don't know what Fortnite is. I don't is. know what Fortnite is. I mean, I've tried to watch it a few times. I'm just very confused. I'm amazed at people can play Fortnite for hours and then sit on YouTube and watch other people play Fortnite for hours. Well, the watching people do things on YouTube, I just, I'm too old. I don't understand how that ever came to be. I mean, the highest paid YouTube stars are people that just unwrap toys. Yeah. You don't even see their face. They're just unwrapping things. There's a little kid who made $11 million last year just opening toys that people sent him for free. I'm just so confused by that. I just, I'm too old. It's, you know, sometimes we were talking about watching the Grammys and I'm like, I don't really get some things that are happening. I mean, I get a lot of things. But some of the things that are happening in music, I'm like, I don't really get it. But I'm not supposed to because I'm old now, I think. Or I'm mm-hmm. getting older. I'm not old. I'm getting older. I've just aged out of it. I aged quickly out of understanding the whole YouTube phenomena of just opening things. I'll Unbo- never Unboxing it. is what they call it. Oh, just so- thank you. Unboxing. Okay. I mean, I've maybe Unwrapping. watched a couple of unboxings, but like... No you have? Deal. Yeah, stuff that doesn't Why? even really matter. <laughs> what? Because... There was, <laughs> there was one where somebody found... Wait, hold on. Okay. Did you watch it out of curiosity of what unboxing was? Or did you watch it because you liked the act of the unboxing? I watched it because I thought I was going to watch someone get sick. Full disclosure. I don't so, know what's better at this point. Somebody ordered off of eBay a giant jug of McDonald's... Michael Jordan barbecue sauce, which was only available in the summer of 1992. And they're saying, watch the unboxing because I'm going to open it up and I'm going to try it. And so I fully intended on this person scooping and trying it and getting sick, but they didn't. And they said, it just doesn't, it doesn't taste very good. And it was like 20 minutes long. I was like, come on, man, just taste that barbecue sauce. Just taste it. I'm so judging you, right? Yeah, you should be. You should be. (laughs) I mean, I'm just... That's 20 minutes of your life you're never going to get back. Never. Okay, let's talk President's Day for a minute. We're going to do it with one of our favorite guests here on IT2. Andy Oak is the first ladies man. You can find him at thefirstladiesman.com. He's written a couple of great books about all of the first ladies of the United States. And he joins us now here to celebrate President's Day. Andy, welcome back to KFGO Radio. Oh, it's great to be here, but you guys have inter- interrupted uh, all of my unboxing video viewing for the day. Um, so I've had to press pause, and my playlist is filling up with suggestions. I'm also endlessly uh, desiring and always hungry for donuts when I come on your show because your weatherman is always talking about stuff being below the donut. Yeah. And I'm not like a crazy donut person, but I find myself wanting to YouTube senseless things of people unboxing things and playing video games while eating donuts, which is probably the last thing any American should do with their free time. But it is great to be here with y'all. It sounds like, though, just a purely American thing that would happen on President's Day, doesn't it? Well, the funny thing is, is that I think I think us watching videos of other people playing video games is clear evidence that human beings have been in charge of planet Earth too long, and it's time to move over and let the aliens take over. <laughs> <laughs> or at least the dogs or something, a robot at something. this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- yeah. That's, that's totally fair. I would, uh, I, you know, it's hard to disagree with you at this point because I, I wonder about it. Uh, but Andy, uh, l- we're not going to watch any videos of people playing video games on, on President's Day, but I'm sure there are a lot of kids doing it since they've all got the day off of school. But Let's talk about how this day started, because while it started um, in recognition of our first president, Washington, we really didn't start celebrating it then, celebrating. I'm using that loosely because some people are watching videos of people playing video games today. Well, you know, the interesting thing is it has become a time to celebrate, you know, when I was growing up and more traditionally, I think, you know, to celebrate uh, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, two of our presidents with birthdays in February, and it has expanded to be President's Day, and people sort of celebrate whichever presidents they like. And, and you know, for me, every day is First Lady's Day. So, you know, <laughs> I celebrate on, on my, you can find me on, 
on uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Andrew Oak, O-C-H. You can go to firstladiesman.com. All my social media is there. And every day I'm popping up some sort of interesting fact of what happened and, and, and on this day and who was first lady at the time and a little thing. It's, it's, it's grown in popularity. And I also like to share other people's articles. My friends at the Smithsonian Magazine and Smithsonian Institution uh, the White House Historical Association, the National First Ladies Library, and on and on and on. Uh, because I think that these these stories are, are all about women that we know, women that we know of, uh, we know the role of First Lady, but we don't know all of the First Ladies. And it's the same with presidents. You know, a lot of people, most people, I think, can't name all the, all the presidents. And, and there are some that fall through the cracks for various reasons. But in thinking about this, you know, this day that did start out, celebrating General, uh, General then President Washington and then Mary Lincoln. It, it's interesting, at least in my process, that there's so much more still to learn and recognize about each of these women that, that we think we know so much about. So, Andy, let me ask you this. Who was the first first lady to have uh, chil- chil- like children, young children, while their husband was in office, was the president? That, that's a, that's a great question, JJ, and a, and a good point because because these younger first ladies, these first ladies of young children, have always been more popular. Um, uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, by the time he was president, uh, his his wife had long passed away, but his daughter uh, Martha, her nickname was Patsy, Martha Jefferson Randolph, was his official hostess, and she had more children than any other. First Lady. She had 13 kids uh, total with her husband, uh, also named Thomas, Thomas Randolph. She also, she had, she's the first First Lady to give birth in the White House to a uh, James Monroe Randolph, named after the uh, uh, James Monroe, the, the, the president. And, um, and, and so that's the first First Lady that, that, that comes to mind that had just a house full of kids. But you, you move forward with, with First Ladies like um, uh Julia Tyler, uh, the Tylers, John, President John Tyler, in the in the early 1800s, leading up to the Civil War, um, uh, he was the he had more children than any other president combined with two wives. He had something like 15 children, you know, six six with the first and eight with the second, or however you know that math uh, uh, adds up there. Um, and it was a house full of children, an active uh, White House. But fast forwarding to one of the one of the first. First ladies to to have uh, to have a baby in the White House would be Frances Cleveland, and that's right about at the turn of the century, um, eighteen hundred, uh, you know, the nineteenth and twentieth uh, centuries, as as she was uh, vice, she was president, uh, her husband was president, she was first lady in the late eighteen hundreds, and when her babies were born, it was it was a big celebration, it was a big to do, um, you know, and she's followed up closely. Uh, the McKinleys did not have children, but followed by Edith Roosevelt who has an active house full of six children, seven if you include Theodore Roosevelt, the president, which I do because he was a crazy man. He was a crazy person. And they were like a zoo, like a traveling circus. They just had crazy animals. But, <laughs> but um, the, the, the public responds very, very well. And it brings up an interesting fact, and one that I highlight in my books is that not only are these women wives and, and, and expected dignitaries and, 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 and uh uh, analysts and consultants in many cases. But they're also mothers, and it's hard to be a mom just in normal, regular life. Imagine how hard it would be to raise children under the microscope of the world stage in the White House. And it's interesting to study how each of these women did it differently. Yeah, I I can't I can't imagine. I think it's just it's hard enough in general now with the inception of social media. Um, you know, Absolutely. You know, to just do it in gen, you know, and let's talk about our current first lady. Um, you know, uh, she has she has sort of decided to keep her child out of the public eye altogether almost. I think, you know, both both Mrs. Obama and Mrs. Trump have done a fantastic job with their kids and being parents, uh, especially being essentially the first two social media first ladies, of which they've been endlessly abused, uh, Michelle Obama and, and, and Melania Trump. You know, people can, from the safety of their home, tweet, post, you know, whatever they think 
on 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 corroborated on research. It's just all opinion and and mean. It's just flat out mean. And when they bring the kids into it, it just hurts my heart a little bit a little bit more. But you know, from the very beginning, um, uh, Melania Trump, I think, was was treated very very unfairly. Um, in that when she, she did not move to D.C. and people criticized her and said she didn't embrace the role. And she said, I, look, I'm just trying to, trying to let my kid finish school. And any mother, I mean, if you, if you had to tell some, some, any woman uh, where she had to move and bring her child for any reason, uh, you, you, you'd be met with, with, with quite an angry person, and, and rightfully so. And just because her husband happened to run for president and happened to win doesn't mean we get to dictate where she lives and where the child will be going to school or race. There's an expectation. But she said, I'll, I'll move there over the summer. You know, my kid's going to finish school. Then he's going to switch schools. We're going to be in D.C. And the same people that criticized her and essentially called her a liar without knowing her or, or giving her any chance to, to, to uh, uh, stand by by her word and, and do what she said. And, 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 uh, they, they were not celebrating her when she actually did what she said. And I'll tell you, living, living in and around Washington, DC, when someone says something and they mean it and they do it, that is rare. And, and Melania <laughs> Trump did it. You know, she, she moved there. She should be recognized and celebrated for that. And the fact that she's able to keep her son, I mean, let's be honest, it, it's gotta be hard being a Trump, no matter, no matter what. I, I mean, you know, it, 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 before the White House, during the White House, anything, and the fact that she's able to give that kid any kind of normalcy and and keep him out of the uh, out of the public and just just let him be a kid and go to school that that's an astronomical feat. I'm really amazed at your encyclopedic knowledge. Every time we talk, Andy, about the first families and those first ladies. Uh, of course, buying both of your books is one of the best unboxings I've ever done in my entire life when they <laughs> arrived at my house. Um, I Thank you very much for making some time uh, for us on President's Day and talking about the, the families and then the, and the women who raised their children and the women who uh, put broods and broods into some of these uh, presidential homes. And uh, I hope you have a very happy President's Day, Andy Oak, the first ladies' man. Thank you so much, guys. Always great to be on with you. Of course, find him online at thefirstladiesman.com. Thanks, Andrew. Let's get... Oh, no, Sarah Hendrick. Markets are closed. It's President's Day today. All day. All day. So markets are closed for today. It'll be at about this time tomorrow. Sarah Heinrich will join us with an update here on KFGO. Going once. 